Well, welcome back to a new video. Today, as you can tell, I'm out in the Triumph 1250, and that is because I have gained, through my contacts in the Triumph Club, a new set of second-hand wire wheels. I have four chrome ones and one painted one, and I got them at a very good price indeed. So, before I fit them, you're going to see exactly what I've done so far, which includes painting the spare and polishing up the chrome on the four chrome ones. And now I'm going to fit them to the car, with their new Avon tyres. But first, you're going to see exactly what I've done already. So let's get to that now. Here's the spare wheel outside on the ground. And as you can see, I've just treated the tiny bits of surface rust that were lurking on the spokes. And now I'm going to try and take this little weight off because I'm going to have it rebalanced anyway and just give it a little lick of paint around the spokes and maybe on the hub too. Masked off the tyre and now all I need to do is just go over it with etch primer and then I'll just put some silver to cover up the rust. So this is one of the wire wheels as I've acquired them. Um, as you can see, they've all been sprayed with some oil to try and protect them. So that needs to just be polished off. And after I've used some chrome polish to make them look a bit smarter, I'll also wash them down. And that should make them look rather good. <laughs> wheels all nicely polished and shiny now they're super clean because I've washed them all uh, unfortunately some of the chrome is coming off the spinners here but I don't think that'll be too much of a problem I can always have them re-chromed when we do the roadster chrome um, the next thing to do will of course be to have them all balanced and put, have new tires put on because from the date code the tires are getting on a bit although they do have a lot of tread left so that's a bit of a pity Oh well. The final touch I want to do is put some little stickers on. I've got some vintage Dunlop stickers and I will put them on the sort of central hubs here to the opposite where the valve comes out of the wheel so they stand out like that.
colours have now been applied and look splendid. They give it a real sort of period touch. So I'm very pleased with those. And the next time you see me, we'll be at the tyre shop. So here are my four new Avon tyres on the chrome wire wheels in the boot of the Bentley. And as you can see, these Avons were made in 2019 in the 39th week. And they even say made in England. So the next thing I need to do is take them out and put them on the Triumph. I even got them to put on lovely metal dust caps. Perfect. So here we are, back in the underground car park with the Triumph and the wire wheels. So these are the four chrome wires and this is the one painted spare. I've got four new Avon CR6ZZ tyres with this lovely vintage tread pattern. And I've left the Michelin on the spare but got a new inner tube for that. So we have five new inner tubes. I've left the spare because it's slightly newer and it's still got some tread on it and it's highly unlikely I'm going to use it. The tyres that were on here were Maxxis tyres but I didn't want to keep them because they were more than 10 years old. They were from 2007. So I've got these lovely Avons and they're made in England. So now I'm going to fit the new wheels and tyres to the car and we'll see how that goes. Here are the tyres which are currently on the car. They are Continental Contacts and I've no idea how old they are because they have a pre-millennium date code. So they're at least 22 years old and obviously you can see from the cracking that they are in dire need of replacement. It's a pity about the nice wheel trims here but I think the chrome wires will look much better. So I'm going to start by removing the wheel covers and slackening off the nuts, and then I'll jack up the car. jacked up. I've got the handbrake firmly applied of course before I even started jacking it up and now I can just whip this one off. Interestingly when the previous owner put the little wheel trims on he fitted extensions to the valves so that you can still inflate the tyres without having to take the covers off. 
You can also tell that this is an original Triumph Herald wheel because it's got the little lugs where the hubcap would have gone on and it would have had a little wheel embellisher or wheel spat on the outside of the hubcap too. Here is my wire wheel. As you can see, it's a right-sided wire wheel. And that means it undoes in the opposite direction. If we take the hub adapter out, we can fit that onto the hub like so and then put the wheel nuts on top of that. When you're buying wire wheels, it's very important to check that the spokes aren't damaged and the wheel is in true, which means that it's not warped on any axis, because otherwise you'll get the most appalling wobble and it's nigh on impossible to balance it out. Luckily, the chrome ones are pretty well in true, but the spare one, as we discovered at the tire shop, is horrendously out. Unfortunately, I've discovered that my bar with the socket on the end doesn't fit on the hub adapter because it doesn't clear the edge there. So I haven't used this open one, this open spanner, which will make talking the nuts up very difficult indeed. I'll just have to do them up as hard as possible. Also, when buying wire wheels with spin-on hubs like these, you need to check the splines and make sure they're not worn, because otherwise you could end up with a car that is completely uncontrollable, because the brakes, of course, won't enact on a wheel that spins on this area here. So this is what I mean by the splines on the hub of a wire wheel. And of course, when you buy wire wheels, you need to check them for wear very, very carefully, because of course, if they're a bit worn, then during an emergency stop, you risk them all shearing off, which of course would then disconnect both the brakes and the drive from the wheel, which would be really very dangerous. Luckily, I have an assistant who is pressing on the brakes and that'll allow me to get more torque on the wheel nuts here. So I've now just checked that there's no way I can do these up anymore, so that's well beyond the 43 pound foot specified by the service manual. And I should be able to just slot on my wire wheel. Interestingly, if we look at the sticker on the tyre itself, we can see that the tread pattern is vintage and therefore it's advisable to fit the tyre to a car made before 1990. Also in fitting wire wheels, it's important to check that the length of your wheel studs isn't so long that it'll hit the hub of the wire wheel here. And then the spinner goes on like so. And this one tells you, it says it's for the right side only, which means that they tighten as you drive along. with wire wheels you need a special hammer which is either tipped with copper or rubber to get the spinners on and off and I'm just going to tighten them up by giving it a little tap. They seem pretty tight already actually so that should be fine. On to the next one. So of course at this point I ran into an issue. On the 
hub itself, well specifically on the axle, there are these three little lugs which actually locate in the centre of the standard wheels. But unfortunately, on my new spinner adapters, the third lug, or whichever way you choose to put it on, is slightly too large. It's very, very slight, so I think that it should be fine, and I have asked other people in the club about this, to grind a little bit off each one. As long as it's all the same, it shouldn't make a difference to how the wheels go on. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. on and then we can put the wheel on. Yeah. Now also when you're buying wire wheels it's very important to check that the clearance between the nuts and the rear of the wheel on the hub here is all right. So for that, I've got a bit of blue tack, which I will put on the nut here, and then I'll put the wheel on and take it off and see if the blue tack has been squashed. There is the wheel on all the way. I can now take it off again. And as you can see, the blue tack is absolutely fine and it hasn't been squashed at all. So the clearance between the nut, the stud, and the wheel is fine. You can see on this side the problem is exactly the same as on the other there's just a slight gap between the hub and the adapter because of those three lugs so i'll get to work and grind them down ever so slightly right now Obviously, I am wearing goggles and earmuffs at the same time. So there we are, 
that's the new wire wheels all fitted to the Triumph and don't they look gorgeous I'm really pleased with how they've come out uh, this one is leaning out but that's normal because it's got a swing axle so don't worry about that that'll straighten out when I take it for a drive speaking of which I think it's time to do that now like on the road then? Well, I can definitely say that the ride quality has been improved. It feels much softer now, although it is quite bouncy with the new inner tubes. Other than that, I think the cornering is also better, probably because of the softer rubber used in Avon tyres, and they're definitely softer than the ancient old Michelins that were on the car. I also noticed when I got in the car that the ride height seemed to have increased by perhaps about an inch, but that may also have been my imagination. Of course, fitting wire wheels to your car will increase the unsprung weight, but hopefully the extra weight is a worthy trade-off for the gorgeous looks of those chrome wires. I would also like to mention that I will tighten up those wheel nuts on the spinner adapters after perhaps 100 kilometers of driving, just to make sure they're nice and tight. But other than that, I will say thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and ta-ta for now.